Let's, um, uh, before we go into the scriptures, which is going to be in Romans 12 and 1, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of your holy word, open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe? We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the believers say amen. I want to thank you all for joining with us tonight on this Zoom program. I'm excited about what God is doing. I thank God every single day that he's doing something fresh and new in our lives. Amen. We'll go to Romans 12 and 1, and we'll start at verse 1. It says, I beseech you, or I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your spiritual worship. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and what is acceptable and the perfect will of God. Transform. God says he wants us to be transformed by renewing our mind. Renewing our mind. Now let me say this. When we accept Christ in our lives, the grip of sin is broken and we're given the power to say no. To renew your mind is to change the way you've been trained to think. Uh, we've been trained a certain way to think. You know, the reason why I say we're creatures of habit, because that's what we are. We are creatures of habit. You know, uh, I've developed some habits uh, since I've been in the faith. But before that, I've developed some bad habits that I needed to get rid of. And and so when I say creatures of habit, I mean, every morning, before my, when my foot hit the ground, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you for another day. And while I'm in prayer, I'm, I'm moving forward to the kitchen, and in my subconscious, I'm going to the kitchen to cut on the coffee pot. That, that's, that's a habit. That's something I do every morning. And, you know, sometimes our habit or uh, our behaviors or uh, 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 patterns that we allow to, to develop in our lives because of what we've done for so, so long. So when we accept Christ, the, the power of sin is broken over our lives, and we have the strength to say no. We all we have all these bad habits we've developed over a lifetime. And unless we're intentional about breaking those habits, they're going to hold us back from being all God wants us to be. So that's why I wanted to talk about these habits, uh, these behavior patterns, because I know that they affect our lives. See, we don't know it, but a lot of the things that we've developed or what we call bad habits, they become strongholds in our lives. And so it's like this. I've always had a problem uh, with attitude. Let's just say, for instance, some people have this attitude. Don't take, take very long or very much for them to have an attitude. That is a bad spirit. And if you don't know that's a behavior pattern, you won't deal with it. And if you don't deal with it, it's going to hinder you from developing and becoming all God wants you to be. It's easy when a person has a bad disposition, they'll always find a situation to, to, to act up on because that's what they've developed. Uh, our habits is something we need to look at. And so that's why I say we are creatures of habit because every time I go to work, I take the same route. Every time. I don't change the route. I go the same direction every time to get to my work and because I am a creature of habit. Uh, some habits are good. Some habits are not so good. But if I'm going to change the ones that are bad, I'm going to have to be intentional about breaking those habits. The only way I can break those habits, I've got to recognize that they are not good habits. They are not something that you want to hold on to. 
let me tell you how you know a good habit. A good habit is a habit that causes you to develop in the things of God and to grow in grace and develop in his character. A bad habit is anything that will be a conflict in your development process. So if you have any habit that will cause conflict when it comes down to becoming all that God said you could be, it's a bad habit. It needs to be addressed. And if you're not intentional about it, you're not going to get past that situation because those bad habits are strongholds or addictions that will hold you back and keep you from becoming all God said you could be. So when Paul wrote in, in the book of Romans, he says not to be conformed to the habits that we've developed, but be transformed by renewing your mind. We've got to learn how to renew our mind and we've got to be, we got to train ourselves to think different. See, I used to think that whatever it is, it is. So, you know, I see what, I call it like I see it. You know, we say that all the time, I call it like I see it, right? But the Bible tells us to call it like you want to see it. Call those things to be not as though they were, but I've been trained to call it like I see it. So if I see it like if it's a rabbit, I call it a rabbit. But the Bible tells us to call those things to be not as though they were. So God is telling us, don't call what you see, call what you want to see. That's a big difference. But see, because of our habits and the way we've developed and the things we've done for all of a lifetime, it's hard to change that unless you do it intentionally. See, I was always, as a young man, I was very swift and I was always quick to lie. It was easy for me to lie, but that's a behavior pattern. That That's a behavior pattern. And, I, and let me tell you about behavior pattern. When you do a behavior pattern for so long, for a long period of time, it becomes an unconscious pattern. That means you could do it without even thinking about it. I would lie for no reason. I would lie even when I didn't have to lie. I lied so much, I used to believe my own lie. That's a bad situation. But if you're going to change, you're going to have to be intentional about your different behavior patterns. Some of the behavior patterns you have are not good. And if you're not willing to confront them, you're never going to change. So, you know, OK, I've got some good behavior patterns. I've got some good, good behavior patterns where I get up in the morning and I pray. I, I study the word. I worship. See, that's good behavior patterns. Those things need to be developed. And let me tell you something. When you conquer the bad behavior patterns and develop good ones, it will produce the fruit of the spirit in your life. But the bad behavior patterns, if you don't deal with them intentionally, they'll control your life and they'll hold you back. And that's why most of our Christians today are stuck. They go to church on Sunday. They go to Bible study. They give, they worship, they pray, but they're stuck. And they don't see any development in growth in their spiritual life. And you wonder why they hang around Christians. They be in church uh, functions, but they don't have any growth in their spiritual life because of the behavior patterns they've never addressed. It's time we deal with the things in our lives that are causing us to not grow in the things of God. So I'm, I'm talking about habits begin when we repeat a behavior enough times until it becomes second nature. See, that's what happened with me. I lied so much, it'll become second nature. I mean, you know, it didn't take nothing for me to lie. And you know what they say, you lie once, you lie twice. Uh, you know, and my mom used to say, if you lie, you steal. And, and she was right. Before you know it, you know, you'll be, you be out there all the way ahead for you. But it was easy because it became second nature. It's like anger. If anger is a behavior of yours, then it doesn't take much for you to get angry. And let me tell you something. People who have anger behavior problems, listen, they could tell the situation is going left before it goes left, and they can sense the hot sauce coming up that leg. I mean, they're angry before the conversation goes to the left because they, are, they have a habit of being angry. It doesn't take much for them to be angry. And if that's you, you need to deal with that behavior because that is not the behavior that God wants you to have. But that's a stronghold in your life. Behavior, uh, anger, uh, lying, cheating, 
even uh listen, there's so many worry is a is, is a behavior pattern. People worry about everything. What about this? What about that? What about they don't know how to trust God? They don't know how to rest. That that's a behavior. You know, you worry so much in your life till it became a lifestyle. It, it becomes second nature. As soon as you get a letter in the mail, oh Lord, have mercy, what am I gonna do? That's that's that worry, anxiety. That's that habitual thing that has grabbed hold to you. And the only way to get free of it, you got to be intentional. When I say I mean be intentional, let me tell you something. Your brain doesn't know if it's a good habit or bad. They can't differentiate, differentiate between good or bad. Your brain can't. That's why your brain needs to know your decision. You got to be intentional about what you say. That's why, I listen, when you confess the word of God, your brain needs to know your decision. If you say, I'm not going to lie anymore, that's a decision you made. But your brain needs to hear your decision. Everything you say, your brain needs to hear it. If you're going to change the dynamics in your life, you're going to have to make some changes in what you say. You're going to have to make some changes in the way you think. See, I, I thought a certain way at a certain time in my life, but now I'm thinking different. You know, I think outside of the box. Like I said, I used to see what I saw and I call it for what I saw. It. Now I call those things to be not as though they were because I'm calling what I want to see. Because if I can't see it before I see it, I ain't never going to see it. And I, I understand how God's word works. But the problem with us is we don't want to put in the work. It's not easy. It's not easy to change how you've been trained to think. Because you got to challenge yourself every time you step over and you find yourself in a situation that comes in conflict with the way the Bible said you ought to be. It's a problem. And that's something you're going to have to deal with on a regular basis. Because it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over a period of time. But you're going to have to be intentional about the change in your life. You're going to have to make some changes. Nobody could do that for you. But you're going to have to recognize that some of the things that I've uh, laid hold on is not healthy habits in my life. And I, I've got to stop no matter what. Like I said, if you develop a lying habit, it, it becomes, listen, it becomes an unconscious pattern. When it's unconscious, that means you could do it without even thinking about it. I know people that lie without thinking about it. It just comes natural. When you listen, when you under the order of deception, see that's what happens. When you get under the order of deception, you're good at lying, cheating, uh, undermining people because that's what order you're in. When I came under the order of Melchizedek, I found out that he came to make things right by what? Telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So now you either under the order of Melchizedek. Or you're still under that deceptive order. Mm -hmm. When you're under that deceptive order, you operate, you manipulate. You mm -hmm. do everything you can because all you're concerned about is winning. Yep. You don't really care who gets hurt as long as I win. As long as I come out on top, that's all that matters to me. And so I'm telling you, that is not the nature of God. And God is saying, I need to deal with that sinful nature. We need yep. to deal with that. And we need to deal with those habits that you've developed over a lifetime because you took a long time to develop those habits. And I'm not telling you you're going to be able to get rid of it one night. No, you're going to have to be intentional about dealing with it. Every time he raises his nasty head up, you're going to have to deal with it. God gave us his word. And like I said, when we got Christ in our lives, the grip of sin was broken off our life. All we had to do was say no. But we still have a choice in the matter. You could say yes or you could say no. You could go with the flow or you could go against it. But you got to do something. You're going to have to make a decision. The habit begins when it repeats the behavior enough times until it becomes second nature or become a creative unconscious pattern. We don't understand the power of habits over our lives, but they're both good and bad. Some of the good habits. Maybe prayer, worship, praise, 
exercise, serving others, and edifying others. Some of the bad habits are lying, pride, anger, excuses. That's a habit too. Always make an excuse why you can't do a certain thing. Living by excuses. But let me tell you, if you live by excuses, you're going to die from the results. You know how many times people make excuses about why they can't do this, why they couldn't do that, and, and they live by those excuses. They live so many by so many excuses that everything that they deal with, they got an excuse for. It. Why it couldn't be done, or why I didn't do it. Excuse, word is a behavior. Lust, cynicism, complaining, workaholic. That's that's even a behavior. Idolatry, guilt, prayerlessness. That's one for everybody. No prayer in your life. No prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. A lot of prayer, a lot of power. You ain't got a lot of power in your life because you ain't got no prayer in your life. Obvious. It's obvious. Listen at this. The brain can't differentiate. Differentiate. I know I'm saying that wrong. Differentiate. The brain cannot differentiate between a good habit and a bad habit. Habits that conflict with being Christ-like or a stronghold or a addiction. Let me say it again. Habits that are in conflict with being more like Christ is considered a stronghold. If you got habits that are, that are conflict with what God said we ought to be like, it's a stronghold. I don't care what it is. If it's vaping, I don't care what what, what it is that you, it, it's an addiction. If it, if it comes against you becoming more like Christ, it's a stronghold. It needs to be broke off your life. But the problem with that is some people don't want to be free. They don't want to be free. They like being in bondage to certain things. You know, I, I had a little brother. He loved getting high. He did. He loved. He told me one day, I said, man, you need to leave that crack on. He said, man, I love smoking crack. It wasn't until he admitted that he loved it that he got free from it. I said, you love it. You need to put it on the altar then. And God broke that thing off. He's like, thank God. He blessed the dead. But he got free from smoking crack when he admitted that he loved it. Some of us, we love that deceptive lifestyle. We love the lying. We love the cheat. The manipulate the kid. No, we love it. Until we admit we love it, we can't get free from it. Because it's still a problem. It's a stronghold in our lives. And when I say stronghold, it's holding you strong. You can't get free from it unless you deal with it intentionally. See, that's our problem is we don't deal with situations intentionally. You got to be intentional about getting free. If, if you really want to be free, you're going to have to be intentional. What's important is what you say. Your brain needs to know your decision. If you're going to confess the word of God, then you need to say it out loud. I would encourage everybody that reads the Bible to read the Bible out loud because your brain needs to know your decision. When we develop these spiritual disciplines, we produce the fruit of the spirit in our lives. See, you either have strongholds and addictions or you have disciplines. If you got spiritual disciplines in your life, it will produce the fruit of the spirit. But if you don't have the spiritual disciplines, then obviously you're struggling with some strongholds. Now, we all have strongholds that we've overcame, and some of us are still dealing with some strongholds. But a stronghold is straight demonic. It's something that will strictly against God's word. It's something that will keep you from growing and developing in the character of God. Listen at this. He says, do not conform to this world. Don't be conformed to the habits that we've developed. But be transformed by renewing the way we've been trained 
to think. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, you do that by first of all acknowledging that some of the habits we have are not good habits. It's not a good habit that we quick to have an attitude. But that's a habit that we've developed that people know it don't take much for you to go hang. It don't take much for you to snap. That is not a behavior that God desires for you to have. That is a stronghold. If anybody can rub you the wrong way and you go off at the drop of a hat, that's a behavior pattern. That's something that you've developed over a process of time. And if you're not careful, it becomes an unconscious pattern. It's something you could do it without even realizing. You've been snapped before you know it. People, like, what, did I warrant that? No, you didn't warrant that, but that's a behavior that, that I've developed. And I'm just on guard at all times, especially people who've been traumatized. Mm -hmm. They are on guard. They're always looking for another trauma. And so every time they get around people, they think somebody out to get them. That's somebody who's been traumatized and have never recovered. If they've been affected before the time of puberty, then the brain was wired wrong. The only way to rewire the brain is by to get in the word of God, by renewing your mind by the word of God. That takes time. It's like a computer. You know, this computer is going to hold information. Whatever you put in there, it's going to retain. If you if you want to change what you put in there, you're going to have to take and delete some of that stuff and replace it with the word of God. That takes work. And most Christians are lazy. They don't want to do the work. And that's the reason why so many believers go to church every Sunday, go to Bible study on Wednesday, they give, they sing, they praise, but they're still in bondage and they're stuck because they've not dealt with the habits that they developed over a course of time and they don't want to deal with those habits because those habits have become patterns that they used to live in. And I'm telling you that if you're going to live for God, if you're going to live free, you're going to have to deal with some of the bad habits in your life because people know you for your habits let me tell you, this. you, you if you got a guy and you say he's a very honest person or he's very sharp doesn't take much for you to rub him wrong they're going to describe you that's how they're going to describe you. you know he's a real honest person but he's sharp or he's a real honest person but 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 you, you don't take much to, to, to get him off the hammer and that's how they describe you. You know why? Because they describe you based on your habits. People study your habits. And they know exactly why you are the way you are. They, they know all, every, everything about you. People watch you. Even people that don't know you very well, they pay attention to who you are. And believe it or not, you might not think so, but people watch you. They know it, it don't take much for her to go completely off. Uh, don't rub her wrong. She's sharp as a tack. You know, don't try to play with her because she come in hand. They, they know. People, people that don't know you personally but just been in your company know certain things about you based on your habit, based on how you handle certain situations because they've observed you. They know certain things. So certain people say, well, I ain't going to cross her because I know how she is. <laughs> what they're saying is, I know she has a habit to go off. I know she has a habit to bite your head off. You better not say the wrong thing. Because she coming with a vengeance. It's like my brother told me, just not told me, I said, go tell at least you want some. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. Because <laughs> cause she's zero tolerance when it comes down to fools. So he understands me. But I want you to understand that Paul was dealing with us and he's telling us that, listen, we're going to have to renew our mind. We're going to have to change the way we've been trained to think. I want you to go with me to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5.
If you're going to grow in the things of God, you're going to have to deal with the habits. Remember, habits are begin when you repeat the behavior enough times. Habits begin when you repeat the behavior enough times. Uh, it becomes like second nature. That's why some people could lie. They don't even have to think about it. You know, you ask them something, they just lie, just like that, just boom. It's just easy because it becomes second nature. It also becomes an unconscious pattern. You know, that's that's a dangerous thing when it becomes unconscious because you could do it without even thinking about it. Could you imagine that? You know, when you start operating without even thinking about it, you know, I could tell you somebody who's who's has a behavior of anger, yeah, it don't take much. Be even before somebody says something out the way to them, the hot sauce is coming up their legs. They could tell that the conversation is about to go left. And the anger's already bu bubbling up because they've developed a habit of anger. If you've been in that situation, then you are going to have to address that. And the only way to do that, you got to be intentional. Look at the fifth chapter of Ephesians. It says, therefore, this is how it's telling us we ought to be. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Now, he's telling us to imitate God or imitate Christ. You know, we always wear the little band, what would Jesus do? You know, that's a reminder. Before you do something foolish and bring embarrassment to you, yourself, and God, think about what he would do in this situation. If we were conscious about what would he do, we wouldn't do some of the things we do. We wouldn't say some of the things we say. If we would just be God conscious, that's what we got to be. We got to be God conscious. People are going to say things to you that's offensive. They may even act a certain way that makes you feel kind of offended, but you still have a choice about how you respond. You got to control your actions. You got to control that. Nobody can control that. But the Holy Spirit has been sent to help us if we yield to him. It says, be imitous of God as dear children and walk in love. Walk in love. Walk in love. How do you walk in love? You love the unloved. You do not let them take you out of your carriage. Even if they say something to you that you don't feel like is just, you still can walk in love. How does love grow? When we exercise, mm -hmm. when we develop, when we get the opportunity to get out of love and we stay in love, love grows. How does it, That's how the fruit of the spirit grow in our life. Mm -hmm. When we have an opportunity to exercise in therein. How do you operate in joy? How does joy grow in your life? When you have an opportunity to be saved and you're joyful and you. Because you know the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you hold fast to what the word says, if you hold fast long enough, your sadness will turn into joy. Praise God. But you got to develop. You got to develop in peace. You know, when you're going through turmoil, you got to hold fast to your peace. Amen. You can't let people steal your peace from you. Because, man, all kinds of situations are coming in your life. That'll steal from you and steal your peace. But remember, peace is the foundation of your authority. So the enemy is always trying to strike. If you can't use somebody, he'll use something to get you out of character. His objective is to take you out of the spirit and put you in the flesh. Because in the flesh, you cannot please God. So the whole objective is, I got to get her out of character so I can stop the blessings of God from flowing in our life. God has so many things he wants to pour into our lives, but the enemy is constantly pulling us in the wrong direction and taking us out of character where we disqualify from receiving what God has for us. Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ also loved us and gave himself for us as an offering, a sacrifice of God for a sweet 
smelling aroma. His sacrifice was a sweet smelling aroma. Our worship is a sweet smelling aroma. When we sacrifice a praise, when we give our worship to God, it, it goes up in the nostrils of God as a sweet smelling savior. Why do you think the enemy is trying to keep you from ever entering into worship? Because he knows that it pleases God when we enter in, when we lose ourselves in worship, when we forget about all the bills and all the things that stress us out and we enter into that place of worship. Well, the only thing that matters is God. The only thing that matters is giving him what he really do, what he's really do. And that's our worship, our love, our honor, our adoration. Man, the enemy don't want you to get caught in worship. That's why most services, worship services, 90% of the people can't enter in. Because the enemy bombards their mind with all kinds of things. They think about everything but worship. They think about what they're going to eat when church is over. Where they're going to go. Who they're going to hang out with. What function they're going to. Everything but what is important. You set that side, that time aside to worship. Give God his due benevolence. Honor God. The Bible says if you honor God, he'll honor you. Mm -hmm. Listen at this. It says, but fornication and all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not even be named amongst you. Don't even be let it named amongst you. Don't let nobody say that you're a covetous person. Don't let nobody say you're unclean or you're living in fornication. Let it not be named amongst you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Boy, that's a big one, eh? Man, foolish talking. Talking crazy. Making no sense at all. Just letting the devil use you. Talking all kagu out the side of your neck. It says, stop being so foolish. Nor coarse or jesting. Which is not fitting. It's out of character. God's saying, listen, there's a certain character that you ought to have. Yeah. And that character is going to come when you deal with some of those habits that you've developed over a course of a lifetime. As you begin to address those things, as you begin to become intentional about saying, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm not going to be like that anymore. I'm not going to let just everything and anything make me blow a gas. No, that's a choice. That's a decision you have to make. And let me tell you something. Your brain needs to know your decision. Because like I said, your brain can't differentiate. Fit. I can't say that word for nothing in the way. Differentiate. Yeah. No, it's differentiate. Different. Your brain can't differentiate between good and evil. It don't know good habits or bad habits. Why the devil don't want me to say that word differentiate? The brain doesn't want you to differentiate between good and evil. So that's why I'm telling you, you need to, your brain needs to know your decision. Let's just say that I want to snap uh, at the drop of a hat. Then I have to say, you know what? I am not going to be like that anymore. Not just saying it. That's not good enough. Your brain needs to know your decision, but you need to have to pull yourself back and check yourself. When you're feeling that, that thing about to come, you say, oh, no, not today. Not today. Not no other day. Because that's what discipline is all about. Being able to pull yourself back and bring yourself in check. And say, no, that's not me anymore. That's not who I am anymore. I used to be like that, but not anymore. I used to lie, but not anymore. I used to cheat, but not anymore. I used to steal, but not anymore. You got to make a decision. And that has to be a conscious, intentional decision that I'm not going to live like that anymore. I'm not going to be hypocritical. I'm not going to stand around and talk about people behind their back. 
If I can't tell you to your face, I ain't going to say nothing to you. That's how you got to be. Just be speak the truth in love. Because iniquity is purged by mercy and truth. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. So let me finish this up. So this you know, no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light, in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is goodness, righteousness, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship. That means we're going to have to change some of our friends. We're going to have to break off some relationships uh, if we're going to grow and if we're going to become everything God says that we can be. Uh, yeah, I like them, but they're not healthy for my development. They're not healthy for my growth. And, and so I'm going to have to make a conscious decision that they are not healthy to be with. They are not a good influence in my life. I don't care how long they've been friends. If they're not going in the same direction as you, then you're going to have to cut the ties. Cut those ties. Cut those soul ties. And deal with the soul, those relationships that are healthy and cut the unhealthy ones off. The Bible says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of God. My name is Greg Baptiste from Behold the Lamb International where we're changing lives one life at a time. We are creatures of habit. We better be very careful the habits we develop. And the unhealthy habits, we need to be intentional about destroying them because they are strongholds. They are addictions and they will hinder your growth in the things of God. If you don't know the Lord, the Lord of your sin, you want to pray, I would like to pray with you. Would you pray? Would you ask the Lord to come into your life? Would, would you actually come and be your Savior and your Lord? Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ died and went to hell. So I wouldn't have to go. I believe he took my place. He was my substitute. I accept the sacrifice that he made on the cross for me. Lord, I, I ask you now, be my Lord, be my Savior. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Place me in a good Bible teaching church where I can grow in grace and knowledge of the truth. I make that decision today that I'll serve you with all of my heart. Help me to break those bad habits that are keeping me from growing and developing in your character. Lord, I will be intentional about addressing habits that I've developed over a lifetime that are unhealthy. I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor because I do understand that we are creatures of habit. And so, Lord, I will. I refuse to allow my bad habits to hinder me from becoming all that you said I could. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to sow into this ministry, we set up with Cash App. Also, we give the fire. It's dollar sign. Behold the Lamb Church. Everything you give to this ministry will be used to touch lives all around the world. We have 1520 Alvin Street every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. I promise you we won't hold you long, but I guarantee you we'll make you strong. God bless you. God keep you to meet again.